It's time for another reflection video. So I have been doing intermittent fasting for 18 months now, if you can believe it. I began at the beginning of 2020. I wanted to normalize my relationship with food. And to summarize in a couple words, I was out of control, out of control. And I have been out of control for many years. When I was 18 or 19 years old, I got into a serious conflict at a grocery store that I used to frequent. We lived in a small town in a suburb of Pittsburgh and so um, I used to have a favorite grocery store that was kind of walking distance from my parents home and one day I had gone to the store. I used to walk a lot. I didn't have a driver's license at the time actually and I had Got, picked out my favorite food so I was just about to pay for it when I realized I forgot my wallet and um, I had been anticipating that food and uh, you know we lived about I, I want to say at least three quarters of a mile from the store so I would have to go back to the home pick it up come back and I just got really frustrated and out of rage I knocked over a few shelves it was really stupid of me in retrospect I knew a lot of people there. I, I probably could have asked somebody to loan me a few bucks, but I got so jammed up in wanting whatever I wanted that I, 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 I just uh, lost all good sense. And long story short, I didn't want to go to that store for, for many years after that incident. Actually, uh, when I got home, I noticed that uh, we lived in a small town where everybody kind of wants to check up on everybody. I noticed that our local uh, police officer had called the home and left a message asking if I would call them back. And I thought I was in so much trouble, I deleted that message. And for, uh, for almost a year, I thought I was in so much trouble. I ended up um, going to uh, school uh, uh, for my PhD and they had to do a background check. And I thought for sure that incident would come up. It did not. And later on, I talked to a friend of mine who was good friends with the police officer. And I kind of learned that he just wanted to do a welfare check on me. Uh, so that was good. But that's the kind of, uh, that's what I meant by I, I was out of control. Uh, I used to have a food craving and I would lose all, all sense of uh, good judgment. And uh, okay, when I was working on my PhD, I was at an event, I can't remember what sort of event it was, but obviously it was a good event for building some connections. But I walked away from it because I had a food craving for something and I went into downtown Henrietta instead of participating in a social event with my classmates. After I graduated with my PhD, I took a job at a tech giant and I was out of control with my eating while I was at that job. Uh, I uh, got so uh, uh, in a rush to eat that I almost choked one time. A coworker of mine had to do a uh, Heimlich maneuver on me and uh, it should have been a wake up call for me but I continue to, to be out of control with my eating. I moved to uh, New York City for another job after um, that job and I continue to be out of control. I, uh, I was spending a lot of time looking for food. I had a, a girlfriend that came vis to visit me in New York. She was from Rochester. And at 2 in the morning, I woke up to, to go out to get food. And my girlfriend said, where are you going? It's 2 in the morning. And um, she knew New York a little bit better than I did. She had been to New York a few times before then. And she didn't think that part of the town that I was living in was especially safe. And she was worried about me going out at 2 in the morning, which she was right for doing. But all I could think about was the food I was craving. I think I was craving some kind of a seaweed snack, if I remember correctly. So out I was going at two in the morning, instead of spending time with my girlfriend and making her worry about me. I moved to Seattle for another job. And that first week that I got to Seattle, I was out of control, celebrating like crazy. The first day, my apartment wasn't ready yet. I went to an extended stay hotel, or extended stay America hotel, and I just celebrated. I went to the grocery store and I got a 
pack of chicken drumsticks, or what must be, uh, I want to say 15 to 20 sticks. I cooked it, I wolfed it all down, and I still wasn't satisfied. I went out to look for other food, and, and I must have had 30 to 50,000 calories that one night. And the next night, I moved into my apartment, and I was so excited that I had an apartment in Seattle. I celebrated big time again. Then the first day of work, obviously, that was worth celebrating as well. Now, I moved to Seattle in June. June 13th is a big anniversary for me. Back on June 13, 2010, I had just broken up with my girlfriend. I had a, the best time of my life, and so that was an anniversary for me. We're talking about 2014 now. I celebrated big time with another big meal. I was out of control. Uh, my job performance was suffering from that. I wasn't mingling with the right people because I was constantly walking out of things because I wanted to get to my favorite food. And, um, and then eventually I lost my job and um, I, I uh, ate to, to kind of forget about what was going on. And then I got another job and again I celebrated again. I was out of control. Three years ago, I was at a meeting at work and um, I had just prepared lunch when all of a sudden my boss decided to call the meeting and I couldn't wait to get out of that meeting because I had just prepared a pack of sausages. I had heated it up in the microwave. I didn't get to it and the meeting just went on and on and on and on and on and on and on and, on and I uh, lost it and I stormed out of the meeting to, to get to my sausages and made a fool of myself. I And later that week, I, I landed an offer at another job, and I quit my job where I got into that anger problem abruptly because I was embarrassed about it. I don't know if I would have got let go, but I was embarrassed about it enough to just leave. And I've been wanting to apologize to them, but, but I haven't gotten the chance to. Uh, I, uh, for, I, I had some issues that, that I wanted to let blow over before I went to apologize to them. And then we had to lock down and I didn't want to bother them even more after the lockdown. I had another problem at my current job just before the pandemic. I'm a professor at a rel relatively startup university. One day I had a student who showed up early to my office hours. I was just about to eat dinner when he showed up. And I was trying to rush him out the door. Long story short, uh, he got very frustrated that he couldn't get his questions answered. I was very frustrated I couldn't eat. And uh, in retrospect, I, I should have told him, you know, can you please come back at office hours at 5 o'clock or whatever it was. But also in retrospect, my eating behavior was out of control. So that student... Uh, this was in the fall of 2019. That was the wake-up call for me. And so in 2020, I made a resolution to normalize my relationship with food. In retrospect, I had so many wake-up calls that I totally missed. Uh, the, the conflict at the grocery store when I was 18. Uh, the, 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 the near choking. What else? Uh, the uh, Losing multiple jobs. Losing multiple relationships. Girlfriends. Of uh, uh, missing time with my family, all of those should have been wake-up calls. Uh, but for some reason, that one student was the big wake-up call. I think I just have very good chemistry with him. I might not mind choking to death or, or losing that girlfriend in New York, but that student I had good chemistry with otherwise, and I let my eating get in the way of that good chemistry. I think that was why that was such a beautiful wake-up call for me. Which kind of brings me to the point that we all have to find our own wake-up calls, right? Everybody knows that smoking kills them. They, they might not mind being killed by something they love though, but you know, if smoking gets in the way of their dream job or a, a, a girl that they like, or it could be something as silly as they don't want to go out to smoke in the middle of a pandemic. You know, maybe they care about the pandemic, but not necessarily about smoking. Who knows, right? Everybody has a very different wake up call for what will make them change, right? For some reason that one student was a big wake-up call and I really thank him because he has probably added years to my life expectancy. He has certainly added quality 
you know, if I were to die today, he's already added a lot of quality to the last 18 months of my life. And um, anyway, I did 18 months into fasting, and I want to say I was I was out of control for wow almost half of my life at that point that I decided to change. And if you're out of control, I want you to think about what you're losing out in your life. Is it time to, to make that leap? Thanks for watching.